Uh, let's discuss now 2022, uh, 2021, 2020, huge uh, issues for many companies facing COVID. We all know that. Uh, work from home, uh, the mental stress, the physical stress, managers trying to do the right thing by their staff and keep everybody engaged. Uh, you know, so many challenges uh, with executive leadership. And I, I want to bring on now, Nicholas Lee is the vice president and market leader of APAC for Philips Domestic Appliances. And IPAC Akinsi, who is the country manager for Singapore and Malaysia and emerging markets for Philips as well, uh, to talk about executive leadership and, and some of the lessons that they learned at Philips uh, Domestic Appliances and how to work with teams and staff and get through the pandemic in, in, a, in a positive way, in one, a way that kept not only businesses going forward, but people, keeping people whole. So, uh, Nicholas and IPEC, welcome to the show. Thanks very much, Glenn. Great to be with you. And wonderful listening to the stories about the planes landing. <laughs> it's hilarious, isn't it? <laughs> Extraordinary. And, and IPEC, IPEC, did I say your name correctly? IPEC, that's all right. Ipec, excuse me, IPEC. Good morning. Me. Uh, Epec Akinci, right? Yes, correct. Great. All right. I didn't know if it was an Italian Akinci or, you know, anyway. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Akinci. Uh, so let's, uh, let's move into this topic, though, because it is fascinating. And, and uh, Nicholas, I know that you, you talk a lot of, and think about, a lot about compassionate leadership. And, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to keep business going. You've got to keep products moving out the door and, and developing new products. Tell us, give us a little bit of your of your input on, on what the last couple of years have looked like for you at Philips. Yeah, so one of the things we talk about, Glenn, is you know how do you lead with heart and be hard at the same time? Because of course the business is looking for results. You know we we are also targeted on that, and I think this whole element about leading with heart um, is perhaps an irony or a contradiction of COVID. We've been locked down. We haven't been able to see people. You know, you would actually imagine you know less about people. And it's actually the contrary. You know, I now know about all the grandparents. I know about all the grandchildren, all the children. I know their names. I know where they go to school. I know their <laughs> medical appointments. You know, there's all these things which two years ago we could never have imagined. We just turned up in the office, said hi, had our meetings, and we went home. And now the home is the office. And yeah. I think, you know, one of the key points there, one of the, the questions that we ask, it's so simple. We don't say how are you, where someone could say, I'm good, I'm great, I'm fine, but they're words that don't really tell you much. So one of the questions we ask is, how are you feeling? Mm. It's a really simple question, and, and someone will say, you know, I'm tired, you know, or, yeah, you know, I'm struggling, um, or I'm energized, you know, I went for a walk this morning, and, you know, I'm, I'm feeling on top of my game, but it's such a simple question that allows you to connect with another human being, understand where they are, and then puts you in a position where you can say, how can I help you? How can I support you? And well, that's great. And uh, first things first, I'm uh, delighted to have Philips on the show. They were one of the first companies to set up in Singapore, of course, after independence. And on a side note, I used to live behind Philips oh. in Topai, <laughs> the wrong one. Block one the heartland of Singapore. Yes, I used to see the Philips staff every day. So Near Chicago great. town, if I can just bring that. Up. Yes, indeed. Anyway, Carrie was known as Chicago town. Carry on, Neil. Carry but EPEC, let's stay with that theme. You know, you're the country manager, Singapore, Malaysia, and emerging markets, and I'm very observant. You're also a woman, and with, <laughs> and with International Women's Day coming up, <laughs> let's get it in there. How is it important to support women? in leadership generally, obviously, but also what's been a very trying time for families. Lots of women are balancing careers, home life, what has been a very tough time if they've got kids in schools, circuit breakers, home-based learning. It's been a very, very tough time generally, but particularly for women. You know, what has been your experience in the workplace? Yeah, indeed. So the glass ceiling is, of course, um, there, right? But it's increasingly being broken in general as well. But COVID itself has left a huge impact on women because in the majority of the cases, they are the main caregivers in their families, right? So um, that has also created a lot of um, stress on them too. And we see it also in our um, environment with our employees too. Um, what Nick has mentioned also, asking them, how do you feel? 
it's also important how often you ask that question, right? So um, in the past, when you would just meet around the coffee um, area and just chit chat, you could understand how people were feeling. You could then tap into certain needs that they may have. But asking that question now online becomes even more important because you miss all those physical interactions. So um, if we think about also women, indeed, um, so uh, of course, it all starts with creating the awareness, right? Uh, raising the awareness on gender equality and the lack thereof, you know, um, and how women may be uh, experiencing this, uh, uh, this period uh, is also quite important. And again, keeping the dialogue open actually helps everyone understand what each of us is going through. Mm. Um, another thing is, of course, um, uh, this is going more on the general topic of uh, gender equality. Uh, we need to also cultivate a positive workplace culture, right? We need to remove, for example, biased hiring processes. We need to have more neutral job descriptions. Um, we need to be more transparent about gender ratio metrics, right? So I'm actually very delighted to tell you that in my organization, uh, Singapore, Malaysia, in emerging markets, we have a gender ratio of 6 to 40 in favor of women, actually. <laughs> Maybe oh. we, we need the, the other way around of diversity. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, Ipek, that's that uh, you know is an appropriate and an exciting story to hear. And uh, uh, Nicholas, both you and Ipek have talked about you know people being willing to answer this question: How are you? And what's going on? But that only happens in an authentic way if people feel like there's a safe space to do that. Because otherwise, they're just going to say, "I'm okay. You know, I'm doing all right." Uh, the standard answer that we give when we don't necessarily want to open up. What what? Uh, steps have you taken within uh, Phillips here in Singapore and across the region? Uh, I will give the question to both of you where you feel like you've been able to make that environment um, a safe space for people to actually talk about how, how they're really feeling. Uh, let's start with you, Philip. Uh, sorry, start, start with you, Nicholas, and then we'll talk with, uh, with EPEC about that. Yeah, I, I think it starts with, first of all, being vulnerable yourself. Um, you know, often the leader is supposed to be perfect, you know, uh, bulletproof. Uh, and, and when you yourself show your own weaknesses and how you're struggling and, and, um, and people hear that from you, uh, then they feel that it's safe for them also to talk about it. You know, if, if that, well, if that's happening to the boss, you know, then, uh, you know, it's okay for me to say that. And I think that's really yeah. the starting point for all of it. I think so EPEC's right. Leading, leading by example, in other words, yeah. Yeah, and, it, and it's a muscle that needs to be trained. Um, it doesn't come overnight, but I, I think that it's about celebrating the progress and every time it gets a little bit easier and a little bit easier and a little bit easier. And honestly, now I, I see the dialogues also within the team, you know, this has happened with my father, this has happened with my mother, my children. I think we all know everything about all of our families now and that creates this amazing awareness that even before you think you had the coffee machine and the chit-chat, but it, it spreads even digitally across the whole region. So whether you're in Korea or in Australia or Indonesia, you now know about everyone's family across the region. But it, it definitely starts with you as the leader being vulnerable in the first place. Yeah. Epec, can I just yeah. jump in there and, and yeah. follow up on what Nicholas said? Because that, that is actually so fascinating to me and, and quite profound, what Nicholas just said, because we do live, particularly in Asia, we do live in a face-saving culture. Uh, this, this slightly stereotypical, almost patriarchal view that the boss must be, you know, rule with a rod of iron and be absolute and unbreakable. And, and so there's a reluctance to open up and to reveal yourself a little bit more, as Nicholas mentions. From your point of view, Epec, what is it like to work with a boss who's willing to do that? What difference does it make? Um, of course, it creates um, uh, an environment of trust, right? So it mm. creates, um, um, it, it makes you more human. We are all human, right? It's, it's no longer those, um, yeah, ivory towers. Uh, indeed, the boss is sitting there and shouting out orders type of thing. And we are all mm. human. And there is also, um, I think, a lot of benefit for the boss, him or herself, having that interaction with their employees as well. It's a learning opportunity for us too, how to be better yeah. people, how to be better bosses, right? Um, so it's, it's quite an important um, environment to create. 
Mm, I, I love the way that that sounds. And uh, Nicholas, uh, you you guys have something called Oxygen Fridays. Uh, I understand uh, where you try to empower employees to find time to self reflect, upskill, uh, do different things. Tell us about that. First of all, how did it get started, and what does it actually entail? Oxygen Fridays at Phillips. So it started with um, a, a survey actually to all of our employees. So we have more than 300 across uh, Asia Pacific. And we were, we were looking actually about work from home, work from office, what do people want to have? And, you know, one of the key topics that was coming back was flexibility. Um, initially, people struggled with this. You know, how do I work at home? I need to set the office up, my computer, my phone, all of my equipment. But actually, once people were through that curve, they actually really appreciated the work-life balance and said, this allows me actually to connect with my colleagues, but also to look after my family and also take care of myself. And one of the questions um, was about, you know, any suggestions or recommendations you would have for us. And people were saying, I really need to have at least one day in the week where I can kind of catch up on emails, I can catch up on strategic projects, I've got some thinking time for myself because mm. with, with the digital way of working, it's so convenient, everyone just blocks time in your agenda and there's meeting after meeting after meeting. And people right. were saying, yeah. saying, give me some oxygen. So we said, okay, let's call this Oxygen Friday. This is your moment where actually you can do those things. And then go into the weekend and not kind of think, oh, I still have to work on this, or I still need to do that. And then that really eats into the, so the private time. So does that mean they're not allowed to, to have meetings on Friday or take calls? Or what, what does that look like in so, reality? So the, the, we, you, you can have a one-on-one -on -one with another person. So if you want to have a coaching session, for example, with a team member, you want to talk about, you know, a specific topic. But, you know, Anything that's kind of involving more than two people, we really uh, try to discourage and, and just say, use this as an opportunity for yourself, for your learning as well. You know, if you, you want to do a course um, or if you want to participate, sometimes on the Friday, we will have some learning sessions. E-commerce, digital marketing is a huge area of development for us. And sometimes one of the team will post a learning session where we talk about, you know, some failures that we've had and some learnings that we've had. And, and people can join that and listen in as part of their continuous improvement. But it, there, there are no kind of 20 people meetings where, you know, people are obliged to attend. EPEC, let's focus on that for a second, that shift towards e-commerce. I mean, it was happening anyway, but of course, COVID has accelerated it, you know, a thousand times over. How has Philips navigated that? What are your plans in the e-commerce sector moving forward? Yeah, this is, a, this is a great question. We have, of course, done a lot of research on this as well. And we have observed um, a tremendous shift, shift in the shopping behavior. And it is there to stay. 80% um, of all the online shoppers of today in Southeast Asia are saying they will continue to do so even after the pandemic. Because people have seen how easy it is, how also trust worthy it is right so th there was a lot of element of trust i pay will it come will it not come so now all those elements are uh, ticked right so it's it's there to stay um and of course we also uh, have some projections uh, for example for apac we expect that um more than 60 percent of total retail to happen in e-commerce in the future mm. uh, so that also gives us of course a lot of uh, motivation to do better there so we are also investing a lot in our uh, uh, teams uh, in order to capture the full potential of e-commerce to meet our consumers where they love to shop as well yeah and, and nicholas if i can bring you into that discussion uh, as well your your relationships with lazada and La, uh, through lasmal and and shopee um, have really, uh, I understand, played an important part in this uh, necessity to meet the consumers where they are. Uh, the fulfillment element of it has always been a challenge for many companies. You know, are the deliveries getting there on time? Is everything working smoothly? Um, how have you guys worked to, with those suppliers, those vendors in, in the delivery space to make sure that the experience for the consumer is one that they expect and one that's, uh, you know, that's truly seamless for them? Yeah, definitely. And if you look at the top priorities that consumers rank about what's important to them in online shopping, you know, yeah. delivery service, getting the product, you know, quickly, safely, in a good condition, and as they ordered it, that's really uh, in, in the top three. I think what's amazing, and perhaps it's also been accelerated by, by COVID, again, it sounds strange and bizarre, but because we've all been forced to work digitally, it's just as easy to connect 
with a Philips colleague in Korea and Indonesia digitally as it is to connect also with customers. You know, you don't need to go to their office to have a meeting. And I'm often actually sitting in these meetings with the Lazada team and the Shopee team. And of course, there's lots of young people joining our organization. I, I sometimes can't work out who's working for Philips and who's working for Lazada. <laughs> it's, it's a bit bizarre. And then I ask my team later, was that person on our team or on their team? You know, which kind of then shows there's this, it's almost like a an varsity or MBA or high school type environment where everyone's just kind of seamlessly working together. And I think ultimately that then feeds into a consumer experience where they just perceive all of that as seamless. They know that they can find our products there and know they'll be delivered. And if they have any issues, they know that they can also follow up. And I think that's the most important part. Absolutely. I think having that environment where people can feel feel free to reach back and to ask ask questions and give those that feedback and comments is is something that every office uh, should strive for most certainly. Uh, we do have to leave it there for now, but thank you so much uh, both for coming on, Nicholas Lee, Vice President, Market Leader, APAC for Philips Domestic Appliances, and Epec Akinsi, the Country Manager for Singapore, Malaysia, and Emerging Markets, also at Philips Domestic Appliances. Great to have you on Money FM. Uh, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Thanks Glenn. for having Thank us. You. Love your show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks for being on.